Hey everybody, welcome back to the Sacred Space Podcast. My name is Gina Stockton and I am so excited that you're here with us today. I have a very special guest today, my dear, dear friend Taylor Bedoya. Taylor is the family pastor at Canopy Church. She works with kids of all ages and I used to be on staff with her and just love her heart for the Lord, love her heart for kids, how she leads them, and really her understanding that no matter what age, kids have great capacity for faith. They have great capacity to have relationship with God the Father, with Jesus, with the Holy Spirit. And I wanted her to come and talk about that. You know, kids, you know, as adults, we can learn so much about faith through kids and the purity with which they believe and trust and know who God is. Jesus even talks about children and their capacity to come to Him and how we need to be like them. So sit back, relax, and enjoy this episode of The Sacred Space. Hey, Taylor. Hey. How everyone starts. I like say awkwardly, I say hi. Hi. And somebody says awkwardly, hi back. And then we laugh at how awkward it is. <laughs> I don't feel awkward at all. Not at, not at all. <laughs> Neither do I. I love it. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, thanks for being here, friend. Oh my gosh. You are my friend. Thanks for having me. So yeah, we were on staff together mm-hmm. at a church, and you and your sister and your brother-in-law and your parents yeah. are all people that I love and adore and yeah. got a chance to pour into quite a bit, too, and mm-hmm. see God kind of grow and ignite and bloom some really powerful things. So you're one of my favorite people, and I love oh you. Oh my god! I don't get to hang out with you enough, but I um, know I'm super grateful that you're here. Thank you. And I really wanted to... Um, well, I've always said, since I met you and Kelsey, mm. and I've told this to you, I feel like a broken record, and I said this in the interview with your parents, that the two of you, pretty quickly, it was just so apparent that you are deep wells, mm. that you just have a hunger and a heart for Jesus that is really sweet and pure, and I would even say rare, mm. and um, I'm not trying to put you on a pedestal at all, I'm just saying it's... It's really awesome to see um, both of you in your pursuit and your hunger for what Jesus is saying, what he's doing, what he's speaking, um, your hunger to grow, to learn, to lean into the things that you don't know yet. And um, so it was such a joy to get to know you and to be able to partner with you in ministry. And one of the things that I love about you is your heart for children. Mm -hmm. But not just your heart for children, your desire and understanding that no matter how young, a child can have a deep, intimate relationship with Jesus. Mm -hmm. A child can have a significant relationship with the Holy Spirit, Mm -hmm. with God the Father. Um, It is a little bit of a cliche, but there is no junior Holy Spirit Mm -hmm. that when Jesus in Matthew talks about um, when he brings the child to sit on his lap and he said, you know, unless you become like this child. And, you know, we look at all of that and we can analyze that all day long, but there's just such a uninhibited faith and belief and willingness to trust that children have yeah. that as we get older, we just, we lose. Mm-hmm. And it, And I think it's just such a a clear tactic of the enemy to steal that faith, right? Yeah. As as early as possible to get in there and start removing things. So I just wanted to have you on to talk about some of that. So, um, yeah, why don't you tell a little bit of your story, how you ended up in ministry, serving in that capacity? Mm -hmm. What is it about children? And, yeah, just tell us your story. Okay. Man, I mean, I know. So one funny thing about me is when I was in fifth grade for Halloween, I decided to be a school teacher. (laughs) (laughs) For Halloween? Yeah, it was super nerdy, but it's fine. That's awesome. I literally like put on a skirt and I put my hair in a bun 
and held books and everyone's like what are you honey i'm like i'm a teacher they're like okay <laughs> okay great <laughs> sure, you're so That's candy. Awesome. um but i have always loved kids i even when my sister and i were probably 12 we decided to put on a summer vbs in our garage did you really we really did really yes uh-huh. that's awesome um we made a plan for each day it was like i don't know maybe a two, three-day VBS, and we had uh, snacks and lessons, <laughs> and we sang and we danced, and there is just something about kids that I personally have always been drawn to, and a while back, I was kind of questioning, okay, Lord, what, what do you have for me? You know, what am I gifted in, and where can I use that? Uh, and the opportunity came up to work with kids in church ministry, yeah. in local church ministry. And honestly, it was, it has been, because I'm still doing that, a very fun, very wild journey. I mean, one of the things I always say is, if you want to stay humble, work with kids. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> because they're just so, I think I just love that they're so honest. They are so filled with faith. You get to start at a different place with them than you would with an adult. And I love the opportunity of that. And as I was praying about, Lord, how did, how have you gifted me? This really sweet woman was praying over me and said that a word that the Lord gave her for me was that he wants to use me to put the hands of kids into the hands of Jesus. Hmm. And I can tell like when I'm with children and when I am sharing God's love with them, that that's what's happening. And that is something that I was created to do. So I think that the journey kind of started just asking Jesus, what do you have for me? And he gave me an opportunity. So that's awesome. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I so appreciate about you in that, because we got a chance to work together on like big VBSs with yes. like hundreds and hundreds of children and all the bells and whistles and the costumes and the crazy stories and themes and all that. But you have really fought for the depth. You mm-hmm. fought for, we need to believe the kids can understand mm-hmm. because they can. Mm-hmm. And you've always approached children's ministry, not from a condescending, and I, please hear this, everyone who's listening. I'm not I'm not accusing or, or judging children's ministry, mm-hmm. but I think it, it's easy for us to kind of get into this routine of it's really kind of childcare and yeah. we're going to talk about God, but they're kids, so they're not really going to understand very much. And I'm not mm-hmm. saying we go into Leviticus and start unpacking the <laughs> law, but believing that children actually can grasp more spiritual things than we give them credit for. And so what I so appreciated about watching you Mm -hmm. as a children's pastor, as a shepherd of these little hearts and souls and minds, Mm -hmm. was that you saw every child, whether they were considered a behavior problem or not, Mm -hmm. every child Mm -hmm. has the capacity to see God, to hear him, Mm -hmm. to hear his voice, to speak to him and have their prayers answered. Yeah. And that that's what has set you apart to mm-hmm. me, and that's what I so appreciated. And you had a lot of tenacity to fight for that. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, I think a lot of it did stem from my own experience with Jesus. <laughs> yeah, You know, like in that season, right when I got married and then kind of in those following five years, my eyes were so opened Hmm. to who Jesus is and that he actually is near. He's present. He's with me. He's for me. Yeah. He wants to speak with me. He wants to have relationship with me. And I just felt like I don't think it's anyone's fault because I think every kid has their own journey. And at the end of the day, it's by the power of the Holy Spirit, you know, that we come to know Jesus. But I think looking back at my journey when I was younger in church, it was a lot of, you know, just hearing how to act. Hmm. And basically it was just so black and white that 
it was, um, you either look like this and act like this or you are not. Mm. That's good. And as a kid, I didn't know how to process that <laughs> yeah. because then what happens is, uh, God becomes a lot less near yeah. in a story like that. And he becomes a lot more about, uh, my actions for him. Yeah. When, oh my gosh, when you, when you hear the true gospel and when you come near to Jesus, you find, wow, this isn't where the story starts. Yeah. It doesn't start with my actions. It doesn't yeah, start with my behavior. Good. It starts with who God is and what he's done for me before I even had to do anything. Yeah. And so when we work together, and honestly, God used you so much in my life because there was still this hunger and this like, I know I'm still struggling with that mindset, you know, and I want more and I'm yeah. seeing God move powerfully. God, do you want to do that in me too? You yeah. know? And when I honestly, it just took the faith to step forward and say, God, do you love me? Yeah. And he showed up. I mean, he yeah. does, he does. Yeah. And what I started realizing is that before I do anything for God, you know, I, am so deeply loved by him. Yeah, it's good. And that is transforming and changing. And it actually creates in me the desire to want to know him more and also be a part of his good kingdom. Like he's such a good king. And so I think as I was experiencing hearing his voice and experiencing healing, <laughs> uh, I had a really tough journey in the beginning of marriage and I needed more healing. And yeah. it just wasn't like the the things that people were trying to throw at me it's like read a book and I'm like mm, still not healed <laughs> you know um yeah. do this just like sit in your room and, and just pray like pray these types of prayers and it was very like it wasn't three-dimensional you know yeah. it was very two-dimensional where it's like okay god please do this for me. But there was no relationship behind it. There was yeah. no like ability to just totally let loose and not be okay. Yeah. Right. Like it, it was like, you need to be okay. Yeah. And then God will heal you. And, and if you're not like, okay, well, you should try this. If exactly. you're not okay, do this. Are you praying enough? Are you, by, are you, praying? you know? Yes. And um, yeah, because if we reduce the gospel and to believe and do. Yes. Yes. We're going to come into the end of ourselves. Right. Right. And then that leaves room for the enemy to come in with accusation, mm -hmm. the enemy to come in with shame, mm -hmm. the enemy to come in with, uh, we'll see all of them. They're good, but look, you look how screwed up you are. Yeah. And then that brings isolation and fear, right? And, mm -hmm. and it's such a, a distorted identity and puts us in the slave mindset rather than the son and daughter mindset. Yes. Right. Which is, it's really interesting. And I, one of the things that, struck me, I think I was having a conversation maybe with Justin, one of the first podcasts where we were talking about the prodigal son. And, you know, when he comes back and he says, well, let me just work in the kitchen. Hmm. I'll, yeah. I'll just go and I'll just be a servant like that. Yes. Because to him, that was the only way he could, he could handle himself coming back to the right. father was right. like, if oh. I'm a servant, then I can maybe exist. Oh. But the father ran, mm. met him, kissed him, and put his robe on him and his ring on him. And I've wondered, too, like, how did the son even receive that? Oh you know, gosh. how humbling would that be? Yeah. Like, did he get to take a bath first? Or was he ushered straight to the table sitting right next to his father with knowing that he doesn't deserve it? And, yeah. and depending on where you're at, that's either humbling mm -hmm and overwhelming or it's humiliating mm. and shameful, right? You know what I mean? Right? And it's, yes. it's all on your perspective and your identity. And it's easy for us to get into a Pharisee mindset, which keeps us in the place of slave, yep. keeps us in the place of believe and do, believe and do, and right. do better. Yeah. You're, do and more. do better You're and do enough. more. Yeah. Um, that's awesome. That's really powerful. Yeah. Well, so I think experiencing all of that and really truly for the first time in my life like getting to know my god and mm. my father and my friend in yeah. jesus knowing him and 
it was like my eyes were just opened and I was like, I want this for everybody. Yeah. You know, like I just, I don't want kids growing up with this mindset that God is far away and he's angry at them yeah. and they need to just work really hard to act like this. Yeah. And so what started happening is I feel like the Lord grew in me kind of a vision of going, oh, wait, I see Lord. Like you've already given me this love for kids. Yeah. You know, now I've experienced you and mm. I, I'm getting to know you. You want me to put those things together. Yes. You want me to help That's kids so know you. And, and I have to say, you know, I told you this, but I'm in major process mode and just asking God a lot of questions about how to do this well. Um, mm-hmm. I know there's not one way, yeah. <laughs> but I know there is a way that he has for me specifically to yeah. pour into his kids. And one of the things that he's been showing me is we start at a funny place with kids. And so often as adults, we just, you can't take anyone somewhere you haven't been. Yeah. And so I think what I'm noticing is it's not because I used to have like anger <laughs> towards the <laughs> church, but I'm realizing like, oh, they just didn't know. Yeah. They just didn't know. And what happens with adults is, especially when we get kids in a room, we want to control. Yeah. And we want to see output. Yeah. And we want to see fruit that makes sense to us. Yes. And we want to see behavior that makes it look like this, which makes us feel better. Yes. Right. And so I'm just laughing as I'm realizing all of this, like so much of what we do in children's ministry is actually to make us feel better. Yeah. But it's not working. Yeah. It's not working. And churches know that. It's not like I'm, you know, there's a lot of churches around the world right now that are recognizing, oh, something's off because when kids graduate from high school, they don't want to go be a part of the body. They don't want anything to do with Jesus. So why is that? You know, there's something that isn't working. And what I'm noticing right now, at least in my process, is especially with younger kids, sometimes we start with like the Old Testament (laughs) and uh, these really, these stories that you can't get into without knowing Jesus. And it's the mythological stories too. It's like Jonah and the whale, David and Goliath, and they, they're not much different than cartoons on Sunday morning because they're so beyond rather than coming back and starting with, there's a God who knows you and sees you yes, and knows your name. Yes. And he loves you. Yep. Right. Yep. And so a couple of things that you said that I want to stop really quick. I don't want to go past them is Mm -hmm. you said when you realize that your love for kids and then this awareness mm-hmm. of Jesus' love for you and what he's done for you, when now all of a sudden it's like those met. Yeah. Then it was like, this is what I made to do. Yeah. And I think that's just a really significant thing that I would love everyone who's listening mm. to hear. Whether it, it's not just ministry as we deem ministry, like I want to be a pastor or children's, but you know, yeah. what is it that that God knit you together for, that you're Mm -hmm. passionate about, that you're gifted for. Marry that with what he's speaking to you as his son and his daughter. How do those meet? Mm -hmm. And there you're going to find your purpose, right? There you're going to find the way that you can transform. Mm -hmm. You can bring the kingdom here on earth in that place that you were planted. Because I think we often look at what other people are doing and go, oh, well, they're being effective for Jesus or they're, oh, wow, they're a pastor or God's called them to do something really significant. I'm just a stay-at-home mom. I've got nothing to offer or I'm just working here or this isn't really kingdom. But that's such a lie. Yes. But to be able to be in that place where we take everything that God made us to be and all of the gifts, spiritual and practical, Mm -hmm. all of the talent, that place of intersection with our faith and with our receiving who Mm -hmm. God is and who he says we are, that's where power happens. That's where dependence happens. That's where being in his easy yoke happens because it's an invitation, right? Yeah. It's never on you to reveal the kingdom to everyone and the grandmother. (laughs) It's it's an invitation for you to to come alongside what Jesus is already doing, be who you are and believe in what who he's saying these kids are yeah. and not just the kids, the parents, because your ministry yeah. mm-hmm. was as much to the parents mm. 
and really shepherding and pastoring them in the process, right? Mm -hmm. So your ministry isn't just to kids and that's just where the beginning of it is. That's where the kind of the germination and the, the that's where the seeds are planted. But it's yeah. so much more mm. than that. I want to talk about a, it was interesting because in our time together, I remember the specific season where you were in this place of hunger and wanting just how do we lead the kids to access them here? And probably the word is empower. How mm-hmm. do I empower the kids? Yeah. Meanwhile, I went on a trip. My daughter was at ministry school up at Bethel and Reading, and I went up to visit her, and they have what are called worship rooms throughout the week. And so there's just a room in the church where somebody's leading worship for like four-hour blocks, and you can just come and go as you please go, mm-hmm. just spend some time with Jesus and worship and whatever. And I'm like, I want to go get away with the Lord. So I go to this worship room, and I walk in, and there's maybe... It's a room that maybe holds about a hundred some odd people, and there's maybe eight people scattered in the room. The lights are dim, and worship. I'm like, ah, oh, yeah, you know, this is good. So I go <laughs> and I, I settle in. I got my journal, and I notice there's about ten to twelve kids, like first graders, in the room praying over the seats. I could see that they're walking through, mm. and they're like praying over the room and the seats. And yes. I'm like, oh my gosh, because by Amazing. this point, I've started a prayer ministry and church and I'm you know and that's that's my jam you know yeah. I'm, I'm all about praying over spaces <laughs> and people and things and the whole thing and yes. and I was like so excited to see that and was like oh that's cool oh how sweet you know mm-hmm. and then I go back mm-hmm. to my journal and before I know it this little girl comes up to me and says hi what's your name oh yeah and I'm like yes hi I'm <laughs> Gina <laughs> And she's like, I'm, I don't even remember her name. You know, I'm, you know, Susie, can I pray for you? And I'm like, sure. <laughs> and so she, she's do, doing the whole prayer model. She's oh like, my. can I, is it okay if I lay my hands on you? I'm like, yes. So she puts her hand on my shoulder and starts praying for me. And I couldn't even hear everything she was saying because worship was happening in the mm-hmm. room. But I was a wreck. Oh, I was like, yes. But halfway through her prayer, I started feeling all these other little hands on me. <gasps> and probably three or four other little kids came over and all placed their hands on me and were praying. Oh and then she opens her eyes and she says, <laughs> she says, she gives me a hug and then she bounces off. And yeah. I'm like, she's like, that was normal. Yay. Yeah. Yeah. Go that, Jesus. Like, <laughs> exactly. That's the thing. It's like, <gasps> I teach prayer training and I, so many of the people that come in are like, I don't even pray for dinner because I'm scared and oh, yes. I don't know what to say. And yo, your prayers are so eloquent and yeah. they're so bound by so much fear yeah. and so much like, again, I have to do it a certain way. Well, you, you pray because you hear and you've got all the fancy words, but these kids, there's just a purity of, oh my gosh, can I pray for you? Because Jesus yeah. is really, he's awesome. And, yeah. and, and can I pray for you? Because if yeah. I do, then he's going to do something <laughs> like that's Cause he's so good. Cause he's so good. <laughs> like it's the purity and the simplicity yeah. of that. Right. Yeah. So I'm a mess, like sitting oh, there writing goodness. in my journal, like, like, what just happened? And probably five minutes later, another girl comes over. Oh, my gosh. Hi. <laughs> like, hi. And she's like, can I pray for you, too? Okay. But she's looking at me, and she just keeps her eyes open and prays. And then she stops, and she looks at me, and she's like, you're like a plant. <laughs> And right now you're growing Ugh. and you're growing. And then she like gets super serious and makes eye contact with me. And she points in my face and she mm. said, but don't listen to what anyone else is saying because you're growing into something beautiful to God. Mm. <laughs> and I look at, I mean, it was like, it went from like kid to like crazy authority. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like, this is Jesus Lord of the speaking. Lord. I'm like, God, wow. I am. Oh my <laughs> gosh. And then this other head pops around my head and goes, you're like, you're just sparkly. (laughs) You're just shiny for Jesus. And then she like skips off. And by this point, I'm a wreck. Now, people listening to this might be going, Jeannie, you're crazy. But in where I was with the Lord and what God was doing and some very difficult things I was walking through, like those Mm. things were profound. And... It was powerful. These children ministered to me. Yeah. They ministered the kingdom to me. They ministered the love of God to me. They ministered. They brought compassion and hope. And this is what community is. This is spiritual community Mm -hmm. through the hands of first graders who 
just aren't caught up in all of the stuff yep. that inhibited them from just being excited to yep. go, we get to bless you because we can. And then before you knew it, the teachers made some sort of signal and they all lined up and they picked up their stuff and they went out. There's a school on the campus and mm. I guess part, you know, it's just the teacher said, okay, we're going to go into the prayer rooms and you guys are going to pray. Oh and so they've created yes. this culture of expectation yeah. and they've, they've just been raising the kids to just believe and trust. Yeah. The Bible, yeah, <laughs> the, what God says to be true—that mm-hmm. um, we are sons and daughters, that we have authority, that we are seated with Christ yeah. um, in heavenly places, that He has all authority, so we do. Yeah. They've just been taught this, mm-hmm. and there isn't—they aren't inhibited by fear. Yeah. So I came back from that, and the first person I want to talk to was you, because mm-hmm. I was like Taylor. Yeah. <laughs> this is happening somewhere, and this is what it looks like. Yeah. And you were like, yes. Yes. And so you actually, before I knew it, you were starting to, it like shifted something in you. So, Yeah, no, it it really did. I think that there were two parts of it for me, which you said is, so first, like we, not first, but in tandem, we need to help our kids learn who Jesus is, the kind of king that he is. We need to focus on the character of God, what he does. Because when that happens, you get to see, oh, wow, there's nothing to fear. Yeah. I can totally trust you. Um, And you always have good things that you want to do. Yeah. And so then, really, it was like I started with that. You know, I started with that piece, and then you came back and shared that with me. And I was like, you know what? I bet I haven't tried that yet, basically, for lack of a better word, because I'm scared. Yeah. Yeah. I'm scared that I'm going to open up the doors for these kids and go, let's try this together, you know, and something isn't going to happen. And then I'm going to feel like I did something wrong or, Mm -hmm. you know, whatever it is. And so I think what the Lord did is he's like, Taylor, okay, (laughs) you got to trust me and you do not keep me from my kids. You Mm -hmm. know, do not do that. And so what I did is basically in full faith, having no idea what was going to (laughs) happen, I just started opening up the door for the Holy Spirit and trusting that He was going to show up. I mean, a little bit more recently, I was with a group of middle schoolers, and we did basically like a listening prayer night together. And it's just funny being the leader in that room because you don't know. You yeah. Again, going back to like, you can't control that. Right. And that's scary for leaders. It's risky. It's risky. Yeah. But the Lord has just taught me, like, I am not looking for perfection. Yeah. I am looking for obedience and risk. Yeah. So go for it, girl. I'm here. Yeah. And so basically, I just you know, gave everyone a note card, kind of the prayer training, you know, moment Mm -hmm. that we've had. And I had already been walking them through, like, this is who God is. He is near and he wants to speak to us. And it's not just for the pastors, quote unquote. It's not just for, you know, this person. It's for you too. Yeah. Your age isn't a factor in it. (laughs) Right, right. And, you know, we all listened. We worshiped through song. We prayed together and then we just listened. And I was like, just know that God is here, you know, just listen. And if you have a picture that comes to mind, write it down. And I, and I tried to talk about it, which you've taught me this in a way that is, it's not like this mystical, like, oh my gosh, maybe God will show up. Yeah. But we, you know, it was more like, Hey, he loves to speak to us. He loves you. And he always has good things to say. So let's just listen. You know, it was very simple. And then I just prayed my butt off (laughs) as they all listen. I'm like, okay, Lord. Okay. (laughs) I trust you. I trust you. I trust you. You are good. You know, and I even just for myself as the leader, I'm like just speaking truth over myself in that moment because I don't want to get in the way of kids meeting Jesus. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, you guys, what did God speak to you? And gathered the cards, you know, and started reading things out. And Gina, it was incredible. I mean, every kid got a word from the Lord and either a word, a picture, a feeling like one girl, she said, (laughs) it was so cute. She goes, I just felt so happy. Like I I just almost Mm -hmm. like I wanted to dance, 
You wow. know, and like that is the Lord speaking to you. That's yeah. the Holy Spirit moving in you. Um, another girl, you know, got this really in depth, detailed picture, and it really touched another kiddo's life. And then what happens is they start to see, wow, like God wants to speak to me, and He wants to use me yeah. to impact other people. Yeah. Like I do. Like you were saying earlier. I have a purpose. I get to partner with Jesus. How fun is that? I heard someone say one time, let kids play with Jesus. Let them play. It's fun. And so anyways, that was really impactful for those kids. And I saw a shift in them of expectancy, you know, just like, oh, okay, this, (gasps) my mindset's a little different now, (laughs) you know? And I just felt like I saw them approaching the Lord differently you know with more expectation so it was really cool (laughs) well and going back to what you said you know you can't really lead people where you haven't been Mm -hmm. right so it's such a lesson for us too if we want that for our kids to really be honest with whether or not we're really to receive it willing to receive it for ourselves yeah yeah Am I willing to believe that he loves me? Am I willing to believe that he has good things for me? Am I willing to believe that he's here, that he's speaking, that he's moving? And am I willing to risk the mess? Yes. (laughs) Yes. You know, I listened to a message this weekend from a dear pastor that I just so respect and admire. And he was teaching on um, Jesus walking on the water and Mm. Peter in the boat and Mm -hmm. saying, Lord, you know, I want to come to you. Mm-hmm. And the way he was teaching it was like, Peter was just, there's no place I want to be but where you are. So mm. that is worth the risk. Yeah. Like, I, it's worth stepping out on the water, which is scary. It's worth getting out of the boat, which is implied safety. Yeah. It's worth all of that. And I felt like even in that message to me, it, it, I felt like the Lord was, it's time to get out of the boat, Gina, it's time mm, to get out of the boat. Like, wow. are you willing to get out of the boat? Let's yeah. get out of the boat. And yeah. and this life with Jesus is a process, right? We're always, God's just in his loving kindness going to take us deeper and farther, right? Mm-hmm. And we're going to discover and receive more and we're going to step into a new level of freedom and authority. Yeah. And then there's going to come a point where he's going, okay, I got more. You yes, ready? Yes. Let's go. Uh-huh. You know, are you willing to risk even more. Yeah. And that, you know, I say I feel like a broken record, but he meets us at that yes. Mm-hmm. And how powerful it is if we can teach kids yep. that that's not a scary place, that mm-hmm. um, he can meet them at that yes, too. Yeah. And to build their confidence and their discernment and mm-hmm. their freedom. And then the ministry that's really happening to the families of those kids as they grow. Yes. Yes. Well, and that's actually what I realized is that, okay, whoa, we all are having this encounter with Jesus. This is not a one and done. And Jesus doesn't want us, I've been processing this lately, doesn't want us to be reliant on the way he did it, Yeah. the way he spoke to us. And so now it is a journey, right? It is a process. It is, okay, parents, you know, and with this specific group, I mean, the parents are just, they're already experiencing that with Jesus. And so they got to walk with their kids in that, which is so good and the hope, you know, but I did notice that, okay, Jesus will, you know, he's going to meet you in your yes and he wants to be with you. But now kids, like, don't forget, this is a journey. Yeah. This isn't the end. Right. Because I, f- I do feel like that's the one, if they're not led well, that's the one right. dangerous part is yeah. I did notice a couple of the kids saying, as we were growing, as we were journeying together, you know, and having other moments like that, it would be like, well, why did she get a word and I didn't Yeah. this time? Yeah. Right. And then there became this like, I don't, I think it was less jealousy, more confusion yeah. and fear and like, yeah wait a minute, but you did this, so why aren't you doing that again? And I think that that's why it's so important to walk with kids in their relationship (laughs) with Jesus because he is not a genie. Yeah. You know? um, Well, that's discipleship, right? Yes. And that needs to be lifelong. Yeah. Right? Yeah. 
And um, the same challenges can be met in even discernment because like the the parable of the wheat and the tares, you know, when God is growing something, the enemy is going to come right behind and sow yes. seeds too. And so th- they will grow together. Mm-hmm. And oftentimes we in our fear or control, as soon as we see something that is not good, yeah. that is not lovely, that is mm-hmm. not pure, that is not patient, you know, all those things, we start to chop down everything. Right, right. So, so how do we be the kind of leaders that can steward that crop well you yeah. know that can that can not be threatened yes. when the enemy just deal with it you know nehemiah mm-hmm. is an incredible book on mm-hmm. spiritual opposition and yes. how to be so confident in your calling and then when the opposition comes not to freak out and run you know yes. hightail it out of there but to how do you stand mm-hmm. you know where you're called to stand how do you not get intimidated by the enemy how mm-hmm. do you not how do you go yeah you know and then lead kids in that in that discernment in mm-hmm. that it's okay but yeah. it's not just kids like we all right. we all right. need to learn how to have grace for ourselves mm-hmm. how to have grace for others mm-hmm. how to not react mm-hmm. but respond yeah And know that it's okay if we don't get it right because God is a redeemer. Yes. Um, Look at Peter's journey. Oh, my gosh. (laughs) You know, like, and, and, and Jesus' leadership and his love and patience and care for his disciples, you know. And, you know, he would say, get behind me, Satan. But then he would, you know, come up and restore the ear that was lopped off you know what I mean like yes. you know it's just that <laughs> yeah that lo- and then that restoration uh, with and and how that turns us into the kind of leaders that we need to be is really powerful I remember after I came back and you started implementing some just praying for mm-hmm. each other like yeah yeah helping the kid not we're not just gonna pray at the end of the service but we're gonna start right. to pray for one another yes. what does that look like and I remember a particular mm-hmm. time you brought up a kid to demonstrate, I'm going to pray for this child. Mm-hmm. And you prayed for him, and the Holy Spirit revealed some stuff, and you prayed specific things. He's like, oh, Miss Taylor, how did you That's know? Right. You know? That's right. And then you paired that. people up. <laughs> yes. And But there was an odd kid that didn't have a kid, and so you paired yes. her with with an adult. An adult. That's right. And that girl ended up That's basically right. prophesying and had a word. Like, she prayed over yes. this adult, and the adult was wrecked because, it's like, yes. she didn't share anything. And this little <laughs> nine-year-old, like, totally, like, read her mail and, oh my like, gosh. prayed into this thing. That's right. There was just, you know, there's something really cool and profound about um, us not being scared of the mess. Yeah. And, um, and not thinking it's about us. Yeah. Because really, that, that <laughs> right. little girl, that story is like, it's so funny because it's not like I was standing right next to her going, I don't know. I, yeah. What I did is I shared who Jesus is and then yeah. I opened up the door for an yeah. opportunity. Yeah. And guess what? The Holy Spirit met that little girl there. Yes. It wasn't about me. Yeah. It, and it's just so cool and so good for us to remember. Like, it's not, like, we have an important role to play. But let the Holy Spirit do his work, you know? Yes, and amen. Like, let yeah. him do it. He will do it, he you will. know? And it doesn't, and, and don't, um, another piece of control or another piece of fear is laying our expectations of mm. what we think that should look like even. Oh my gosh, yes. You know, we say, Lord, have your way. And then when he has his way and it doesn't look like the way we think it should look like, then yeah. we then we're disappointed or we're yeah. trying to manipulate it back to what we think it should be. Yeah. Right. Yep. Dude. I um, actually have a story with that. Yeah. Well, share it's, it. it's so funny because I feel like this is actually a very, um, I don't know, maybe just in my story, but I see it a lot in children's ministry. Like we talked about, um, the expectation of what it should look like. And people just come in, you know, thinking that they know what a moment needs to look like or whether or not God did something. It's like, oh, yeah, he did something. Or, no, oh, no, he did it. And right. I'm like, oh, boy, that's super dangerous. But yeah. just a little bit ago, I was teaching, and the the group was rough. I mean, they were just not listening. They were a little crazy and rowdy, which in— for me, I know, especially in my experience, you will 
most likely never have a room of kids who just stay quiet for you, no matter how engaging you are. Yeah. And it's just so funny how people like want that or feel like that's what it has to look like for a kid to receive. Oh, dude, I've made the biggest mistake once. <laughs> what? So <laughs> tell me. I'm just gonna be keep it real. <laughs> so when the girls were in elementary school, uh huh, I led what was called the Good News Club. Oh yes, I want to be in that. Which <laughs> with you, lady. it was really funny because. It wasn't mops. It was uh, some sort of praying mom group. Um, We got together, and they're like, oh, we're going to bring the Good News Club to the school, and um, we want to help. And I'm like, yeah, I'm in. And then, of course, they all kind of abandoned (laughs) me. And the Good News Club (laughs) comes from, like, a church, some organization, but it was super antiquated. It was, like, 1975 Lutheran Church Sunday School with (laughs) just short of flannel graphs, you know. (laughs) And so... But it was super fun because I was like, okay, we're not going to do this. And I, and I started changing things. And this was before Rob Biaggi was like a big thing. I brought him to the school. We did a huge Christmas party. Oh we had all goodness. these kids. So I did it for like so two or three years. And then my last year, I was just getting over Like I, I had help for a couple of years and then it was just me. And then the kids were grumpy and just being a pain <laughs> and we had like two weeks left of school and we had one meeting and they were not falling in line and so I just canceled the rest like I didn't even do the end of the year party I'm like no you guys can't and I remember after I canceled it Uh, I think my girls looked at me like mom you canceled (laughs) and and I in my like in my yes. zeal was so yes I did and then, yeah then I got so convicted I'm oh like, dang it oh, because yeah. it was that like you just get so frustrated and yeah. it's like pay attention and right. you're being disrespectful and why aren't you listening and well yeah. then I'm not gonna you know and yeah. it was like it was so about me it was so about my flesh it yes. was so about all of the wrong things yeah so much adults so. and and we've all had those moments I have too like the Lord has taught me this but we want it to look like it looks for adults. Yeah. But it's not going to look that it's way. It's not going to look so that anyways, way. So it, anyways, it's so funny because the group was rowdy, right? It, in my flesh, I could have been like, everybody leave. Like, we're done. Like I did. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I was just like, okay, you know what? I'm just going to keep teaching because God asked me to plant seeds. Yeah. He didn't ask me to be con- in control of the harvest. Yes. So I'm just going to plant this seed. Whoever wants to... Take it, can take it. Whoever doesn't want it, that's their choice. That's okay. Yep. That's totally okay. We're all on a journey. And um, there was one specific kid who was just, like, super disrespectful and, like, not really having any of it. And you could tell was almost, it seemed, right, like he's rebelling against what I'm teaching. Yeah. And I sent them out to do this activity where they drew on a piece of paper or wrote down, you know, what they need from Jesus right now. Like, because we can go to him and we can ask. Yeah. We can ask for help. He's the one to go to. And to be honest with him, I went up to that boy because he was sitting alone. And I'm like, hey, bud, what did you write down? You know, do you want to show me? And he goes, I guess you can look at my paper. And I go, okay. So I grab his, he hands me his paper. You know, he won't tell me it. I have right. to look at it. Yeah. Okay. So I look at his paper and he wrote down something very hard that he's going through and a big fear that he has. Hmm. So like, look at this, right? The kid who seemed so disrespectful, didn't want any of it actually received yeah, and actually wanted Jesus to meet him in his need. Yeah. And so I said, wow, this is, this is hard. This is hard. I'm so sorry. You know, can I pray with you about it? And what's hilarious is the Lord gave me a word for him and you taught me, I try to pray with my eyes open, which is still hard for me. I just like want to close my eyes. I don't yeah. know what it is, but I have my hand on his shoulder and I'm looking at him as I'm praying. Yeah. And I shared the word and he looked up, like he darted his eyes, hmm. but then it was awkward <laughs> because then we're looking at each other and it's like, it's so 10 year old boy. And I just giggled, and then he, like, looked away and looked down, and I just kept praying, but I was like, okay. Yeah. Okay. And at the end of that lesson, someone came up to me, and they're like, well, that was sort of a success, like, as in that was, you know, that didn't totally work, but nice try. 
And I was like, oh no, it was a good teaching moment because I was like, you don't realize this, but that boy that seemed like he wasn't having it, I actually got to pray with him and I believe that the Lord spoke to him and I'm going to keep praying for him. I'm so glad I had that moment. I got to have that moment with him. And she's like, oh my gosh. And all that to say is kids ministry, you cannot... It's a seed planting ministry. Yeah. You well, cannot. it's not just kids ministry though. Right. You're right. You're right. You know I always what I say mean? That. like yes. I think you know, I think True. yes because I I think the nature of kids ministry is adults feel like they have to control it cuz it's children, yeah. right? Yeah. So there's all of that, but you know, that story is so much about God's economy. Mm. You know, mm-hmm. God is the God who leaves the 99 for the one. Yes. Yes. And that mm. all was worth it. Yep. For that. Yes. You know what I mean? Like, and then you don't, and you don't even know the things that weren't spoken, the things so that weren't demonstrated, which is, is crazy cool and powerful. Yeah. It's really good. He's good. Yeah, he, he will is. meet his kids. Yeah, he will. <laughs> so fun. <laughs> it is fun. I love it. There's a couple of things I want to come back to for you to just take to Jesus and ponder. One thing that came up that I loved early on in our conversation was Taylor's story of her own healing, her own journey of receiving God's love, and then her passion for kids. So that place where our relationship with Jesus and our hunger for Him meets how we're made, meets the things that we're passionate about, that's where you find your purpose. So I want you to just take a minute and think about that. This brief moment without your phone in front of you or watching TV or working or in a conversation. Just take a moment and reflect on your relationship with Jesus, with the degree to which you can receive how loved you are, all that he's done on your behalf. And then how did he make you? What do you love? What do you get excited about? What are the things that that drive you? Because they're not mutually exclusive. God's a creative God and he delights in his kids. And so he wants to be brought into the center of those things. Maybe, like Taylor, you know what that is. You have that vision, you have that dream, you have that hope, but you're not sure you want to step out of the boat (laughs) because you're scared. What if God doesn't show up? What if I embarrass myself? What if I look like a fool? Like Peter, in the boat, maybe the water can be intimidating. But do you want him more than you're worried about failure? Like I felt like the Lord told me just recently, Gina, get out of the boat. (laughs) That boat represents safety. It represents the things that are comfortable. But Jesus is calling us out onto the water. So in what ways is he calling you? And finally... If you work in kids ministry ever, volunteer at VBS, if you have children, 
maybe it's time to recognize that their capacity for faith and joy and receiving who God is, who Jesus is, who the Holy Spirit is, is far greater than our own. Maybe it's time the next time you go to serve instead of getting frustrated and exasperated by hurting the cats <laughs> that you stop and you ask God to give you his eyes that instead of getting frustrated with that troubled child who always makes disruption that you begin to pray and intercede for that child that girl that boy that you start to partner with God in how you lead and love these kids and in that process God's going to bring transformation to you and revelation to you and he's going to set those kids up for a life of healthy relationship with him because God doesn't waste anything It's never just about us. It's never just about that child. It's never just about the person we're praying for. It's about all of us. And most importantly, it's about him. So Father God, I just thank you that you're in a good mood. I thank you that you are calling us, that you are drawing us to trust you deeper to get out of the boat. And Lord, we just come before you and we just repent for fear, for insecurity, for doubt, for being scared of what people think of us or or just not thinking that we're worthy or that we have anything to offer. Holy Spirit, would you come and would you minister and speak to your kids? Convict us. Challenge us. Fill us. Strengthen us. And we ask all this in your name. Amen. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Sacred Space Podcast. I'm so grateful for Taylor and her willingness to take the time and her heart for God. If you want to know more information about Canopy Church, you can visit them at canopychurch.net. Sacred Space is supported by Stockton Ministries, a nonprofit organization. If you would like to donate to help support the production of this podcast or the upcoming Dwell Project and other projects that we have in the works, you can go to the episode notes below and click the link, or you can go to my website, genastockton.com, and click the donate button in the far right corner. You can also subscribe to my email list. I don't send out that many emails, but if you want to know when things are coming and new projects are released, you would get an email that gives you information on those. So you can do that in the episode notes, click the link, or again, go to my website, genastockton.com. I would also love to hear from you, hear what God's doing in and through you, and just hear how God is ministering to you through this podcast. As always, if you haven't already, subscribe to this on iTunes and please, please, please consider rating and reviewing us because the more rates and reviews we get, the more findable we are on iTunes. I hope you have an amazing day and an amazing week. God bless you.